English by the Nature Method, Chapter Forty Five, the Forty Fifth Chapter, a Football March. One day in September, when the football season had begun, Marshall asked Storm if he would like to go to a football match with him. Are you doing anything else next Saturday, or is that day convenient to you? Storm, no, I have nothing else on. So, so that Saturday afternoon will be quite convenient to me. I shall be very pleased to go to the match with you. I wonder if the kind of football we are going to see is the same kind as we have at home. For I know that you have two kinds of football in England, Marshall. Yes, we have two kinds of football. The game we are going to see on Saturday is the one you know, so you will not have any difficulty in following it. The other kind is called rugby, after the famous school where it was first played. Storm, I have never seen any rugby football. Then you would not understand much of it, for the rules of the game are quite different from those of the kind of football you know. There are fifteen players. They may carry the ball in their hands if they like, and the ball itself is not round. I'm very surprised. Storm replied, "I have never heard how it is played, but from what you say, I understand that the rules of the game must be very different from the rules of the kind of football that is played in my country. I don't see how it is possible to kick a ball straight if it's not round. I'm sure it must be much more difficult to kick the ball to the right man." Well, wait till some other time, and you'll see for yourself how it's done. Saturday had come, and Marshall and Storm were on their way to the march. They went by bus to the nearest underground station. As it was rather late, they jumped on a bus after it had started moving. People in London often jump on and off the buses while they are moving in order to save time. Having arrived at the underground station, they went down to the platform. Storm, it's quite a long way down to the platform. It must be very deep under the ground. Marshall told him that some lines of the underground railways are only just under the ground, but that he was right in saying that this line was very far down, and he added that it was deepest in London. The train came into the station, and the doors opened. There were so many people just behind the two friends that it was hardly necessary for them to do anything to get into the carriage. They were pushed into it by the people behind them, but many of those who were standing behind them did not get into the carriage because there was no more room, and then the doors closed. People don't usually push so much as they did on this platform," said Storm. But Marshall only laughed, saying, "Remember that you are going to a football match. We are we are interested in many different games in this country, but in the eyes of most English people, football is the best game." Storm. I noticed that the doors opened and closed of themselves. How long have you had doors which open and close automatically? I can't tell you how long we have had them, but you know that during the last fifty years, so many inventions have been made which save us much time and money. As for instance, doors which work automatically to the underground, this invention is very useful. It's no longer necessary to have two or three men to shut the doors of the trains, for now they are all shut by one man. Marshall told them, told Storm, that they were going to see the famous Arsenal Football Club, which is one of the most famous clubs in the world by reason of its many good players. Storm had once said Arsenal at home, where they had beaten his country by four to one. Marshall, that's not strange because they have nearly always won when playing on the continent. It's very seldom that a foreign club is able to beat them. I expect that they will win this afternoon too, as they are playing as so well this year. A few minutes later, the train stopped, and the people rushed out of the train to get up to the street as quickly as possible. Storm had never seen people rush about so much as they do in London, especially in the city and when going to games of some kind. While they were waiting for the game to start, Marshall told Storm something about the English football clubs, and the best-known football clubs in England. The players are professionals, which means that football is their work, not only a game that gives them pleasure. As it is necessary for a professional football player to be able to run very fast, he must not only have good legs but also very good lungs. These are the lungs. You have them in your chest, 
and that's your heart. It sits between the two lungs here in the middle. It is also very important to have a strong heart. Without especially good lungs and a strong heart, a man will not be able to last very long as a professional. These are two of the most important things required of a professional, but besides, he has to be in very good health. For if he has not got that, he cannot play football. A professional must, therefore, give much attention to his health. These players are nearly always thinking of the health, giving it even more attention than they give to their practice in playing football or either exercise and running, jumping, kicking, etc. Many of them smoke and drink very little. Just as the ladies at Hollywood are proud of their legs, so too are professionals. The muscles of their legs are quite hard. They take exercise in running, kicking and jumping every day. And this makes the muscles of their legs hard. Storm and Marshall had been waiting for the game to start. And now the whistle was blown. This is the whistle. Storm noticed that the grass was not particularly good. And in some places... He was even able to see the earth itself under the grass. When I play football at home, you can see nothing but grass, he told Marshall. You would not find any places where the earth might be seen. Storm and Marshall soon saw that, the Arsen saw that Arsenal players were much stronger than the players of the other club. Every time the ball was kicked over the white line at the side by one club, the whistle was blown and the play stopped until the other club had taken the ball and thrown it in again. Storm had very seldom seen the players in a match through the ball in so many times. The Arsenal players were playing against the wind, but yet the first half of the match finished 2-1 to one in favour of Arsenal. In the second half of the game, they had the advantage of the wind, and with the wind behind them, they finished the match 5-1 to one in their favour. A large number of men were present either to take photographs or to write reports of the match for the newspapers, which always bring long reports of all that has taken place in the world of sport. There had been about 50,000 people at the match, and when the two friends left the place, it was almost impossible to take more than one short step at a time. This is a step. It's rather tiring to have to take such small ladies' steps, said Marshall, laughing. Storm, how many matches have Arsenal played this season? Marshall, counting the one today, they have played six times, but once they didn't win, so that there are five matches to their credit. I remember that some years ago they played 18 matches on the continent and came back with all 18 to their credit. They continued to discuss football, and during the discussion Storm asked how long football had been played in England. It has been played in some form or other for hundreds of years but it has only been played in its present form for about a hundred years. When they reached the underground station, they had not yet finished their discussion of football. Marshall was telling Storm about the most important match of the year, the one between England and Scotland. The number of people who go to, the, to a match like that is very great. One year there were 150,000 present in Glasgow. It's not always the country that plays best that wins. The players know that the eyes of 150,000 people are upon them, and very often it gets on their nerves, makes them nervous. This means that it's often the players who have the best nerves that win. Besides the match with Scotland, we play many international matches every year, for example against France and Holland. Such matches are called international matches, because players of different nations take part in them. I think that these international matches in the world of sport are of great importance in helping the different nations of the world to get a better understanding of each other.